This is going to be a quick tip video answering a couple of the questions I get asked most often about the handheld extruder. So I use my handheld extruder to make my handles. Uh, I've got a full video about that. I'll link it below. But two of the questions I get most often are how you load the clay in to avoid air bubbles and how you clean the extruder afterwards. And I've seen a few people propose different solutions to these two problems, but I have my own ways of doing it. So I thought I'd quickly discuss those here. Firstly, avoiding air bubbles is actually relatively straightforward with this if you can avoid putting air bubbles in in the first place. So if you're starting with air-free clay straight from a bag or freshly wedged, the trick is to get it into the extruder without adding any air. Now, a lot of people roll it into a sort of sausage that will fit down the tube to load it, but that means there's a load of air around the side. And depending on where that air goes as you start to extrude, that can quite easily get um, included in the clay itself and come out as bubbles. Now, the reason we don't want to have bubbles in the clay is that a bubble in the clay gets extruded out and either bursts at the surface level and so you can't use that section of extrusion for a handle or it stays hidden within the handle until you go to bend it and then it uh, ruptures at that point. So we want to avoid any air inside the clay and the easiest way to do that is to load the extruder under pressure. Assuming you're using a handheld extruder like mine, there's a clip at the back that allows the plunger to move backwards. And it's quite a simple mechanism that makes the extruder work. But as you pull on the trigger, it moves a mechanism that slides the plunger down the inside. And that mechanism prevents the plunger from moving backwards. It can move backwards if you push down the lever on the back. So what I do to load it, I rest the extruder over the edge of a table on that lever so the plunger can move backwards um, with the plunger fully plunged and I use the pressure of the clay to force the plunger down and what this means is that you can load it because it doesn't really want to slide particularly once there's a bit of clay in there you've got to put a decent amount of force in there and this way forces the clay in under enough pressure that no air in theory can come in with it there are a couple of tricks round both the surface of the clay so once i've pushed the clay in i then pull the trigger once to pop it back out and round the top of it off and i round the ball of clay that i'm loading into it to make sure that there's no air trapped between the two of them and then i, I press down to squash the clay in and push the plunger down so that's pretty much it to be honest once you get the hang of that it doesn't take too long to load but should more or less avoid any air bubbles and then how to clean it it's just a case of finding the right size bottle brush unfortunately the one that i use i can't link to because it's well i can link to but most of you won't be able to buy it because it comes from sainsbury's in the uk i don't know where else sells it but i assume it's a, a fairly easy to find product even if you don't get this exact one but if you can find a bottle brush that is the correct diameter for the tube then you can just plunge that down inside i rest the whole thing in a pot of water and just use the bottle brush to plunge down the inside and it cleans it out in a couple of seconds very little fuss as an added bonus the one that i use has a little brush that can do the dies as well it's exactly the right size to go inside the hole on my handle extruder dies but you might have to find one of those available locally to you i'll see if i can find anything on amazon that resembles the one that i've got but i haven't been able to so far uh, and that's pretty much it they're just two little things that make using the handheld extruder a little bit more straightforward bypasses two of the difficulties that people have with it and i would highly recommend a handheld extruder like this if you don't particularly like making handles